If you're an empath or highly sensitive person and you feel overwhelmed by the state of the world, first off, know that you're not alone. Today I'm answering an Instagram comment from Jason who wrote this. I have a hard time not getting overwhelmed with being a highly sensitive person. I see all the hurt and pain in the world, all the hurt humanity inflicts on itself and the natural world. I feel all of it. I'm trying to make sure I find a balance with knowing what's going on in the world and knowing when to turn away so I don't absorb so much. I hear you, Jason. As someone who's highly sensitive like you, I know how overwhelming it can be. But I have some ideas to share that I think can totally change things. So you'll not only feel less overwhelmed, but be able to participate in life in a more joyful, peaceful, and purposeful way. I'm gonna lay out a few pieces that might seem totally unrelated at first, but just stay with me and I promise it will all connect together. The first thing that I think we need to do is to make a systems shift. A book that has been incredibly transformative for me is called When Society Becomes an Addict by Ann Wilson Schaaf. It's definitely on my list of recommendations. So Schaaf presents that the society in which we are living is by and large an addictive system based on fear. What this means is that most people are engaged in addictive processes of some kind, unconsciously running away from themselves and their pain or trauma. And this can lead to self-centeredness, dishonesty, denial, dependency, defensiveness, and more. Now, not only is this happening on the individual level, but also collectively, and the culture, groups, and systems we belong to or identify with oftentimes perpetuate and enable these addictions. The addictive system as a whole is an unsustainable paradigm that leads to the destruction of life itself. And we can see that all around us. Wars, power, control, greed, rampant consumerism, humanitarian crises, racism, the list goes on and on. Now, just to be clear, I wanna tell you that I'm not some ascended being and I'm not immune to the addictive system myself. Schaaf points out that almost all of us are recovering addicts of some kind, whether that is addictions of process like compulsive thoughts or behaviors or consumption, food, drugs, alcohol, etc. She says this not to invoke shame, but to instead point to a new reality where we can participate in the creation of a new system by noticing our addictions and choosing sobriety. As I was preparing for this video, for example, I noticed a restlessness within myself that I was compulsively trying to avoid by distracting myself through social media. And in that moment, I had a choice to participate in the process of life, which means to sit with the restlessness or to numb myself through an addictive process like constantly checking my phone. And this leads to an internal boundary issue, which is exactly what I was talking about in my last video. Link up there. So once you start seeing the world through this lens of moving toward or away from healing, it could help to clearly frame things up so you can more intentionally choose how you want to be in the world and to shift into a new system. Schaaf says this at the end of her book, as we treat the addictive process within ourselves and start recovering from it, we literally begin to do life differently. One of the major differences is that we no longer use the addictive system as a point of reference. We do not go along with it, but we do not fight it either. It simply has no more relevance to us. We are completely separate from it. In making a systems shift, we have left it behind. So you might think that this language sounds like avoiding the world and its problems, but it's actually completely the opposite. What Shafe is talking about here is participating in a paradigm shift within yourself first. One of my favorite quotes by Einstein is, no problem can be solved from the same level of consciousness that created it. So we choose to disidentify with an old paradigm that is not supportive of life, and we go through an internal healing process in order to adopt a new system that is life-giving and sustainable. It's like helping to create a whole new world. So on this same note, let's talk about fractals. Fractals are these geometric patterns that continue to repeat on and on forever, and every part of the image, no matter how zoomed in you are or how zoomed out you are, looks almost identical to the whole image. We see this everywhere in nature, including every human being who is like a microcosm of the macrocosm of the universe. I think that highly sensitive people and empaths know this intuitively. 
We don't have the luxury of being cut off from this truth, which is why trying to operate from an outdated paradigm is intolerable for us. We can feel this direct connection with all things, humans, animals, plants, and the universe at large. This can be incredibly humbling, seeing how small we are in the scale of the cosmos, and it can be empowering and give us a great amount of responsibility to govern that which is within our control, the state of our internal world. So if you want less violence in the world, first attend to the violence that may be occurring within yourself. Are there parts of you that are at war with each other? If you want more empathy in the world, where can you bring more empathy to your inner reality? If you want greater order, clarity, and peace in the world, create it first within yourself. And if you want less judgment, notice where you might be judging yourself or others. When we participate with life in this way, it requires that we become very honest with ourselves. At first, it might be unsettling or uncomfortable, but you will notice a deep peace arising within you as you continue to go deeper. I'm a big believer that when we do this work, we don't have to try so hard to figure out how to make a change in the world. We just become it. The opportunities present themselves and we respond. We start modeling what is possible for others and we keep participating in our own process. We let go of what it looks like on the outside and we know without a shadow of a doubt that we are living in our integrity or at least moving in that direction. Because integrity or wholeness is an undeniable feeling that we can track within ourselves. Now, as you step more and more into your wholeness, you become a channel of light. You can access more and more of your creative potential and your purpose emerges because it just can't help but to emerge. A metaphor that I like to think about is that we all have our own corner of the universe to attend to. You know, if we are part of this tapestry of life, there is one section of that tapestry that is ours to do. We all have our own unique way to serve. And this becomes more and more obvious over time as you dive into your inner work and eventually you'll be less apt to absorb the state of the world because you'll know what is yours to do and what is not yours to do. You can hold a healthy boundary up knowing that it enables you to be a more effective channel and to live your purpose. If you imagine a column of light coming down into your being, rather than it being scattered and diffuse, it starts becoming much more clearly focused. And from this vantage point, you're able to take a step back. Maybe you notice that in order to survive within the old addictive system, you had to numb yourself to some degree. I think oftentimes in this era of social media, our coping mechanism for dealing with the underlying anxiety of not belonging to the prevailing paradigm is that in our search of something else, we do that which we've been taught, which is to just keep taking in data to the point where we just go numb. So as we develop healthier boundaries around what we consume, partly because we have more confidence that we are living our own truth, we're able to step back and have some space. And in this newfound space and healthy distance, we grieve. We grieve where the world is at. We allow ourselves to feel everything, but not from overwhelm or from hopelessness. Instead, we, as a channel, let it wash through us. It becomes a catharsis because we are moving in a new direction. We feel in order to reconnect to ourselves and the world in a profound way and to access the felt sense within us as a guide to forge a new path forward. All right, so that's my response. How does this all resonate for you? Let me know in the comments below or ask me a question or suggest a topic you'd like discussed in future videos. Give a thumbs up if you like this video and be sure to click subscribe and set your notifications to get updates as soon as new content comes out. Thanks for watching and namaste friend.